Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I am Tina Jha. The government on Monday introduced a bill in the Rajya Sabha to replace a nine-decade-old law to pave the way for shifting from lighthouses to modern aids for marine navigation. Union Minister of Ports, Shipping and Waterways, Sarbanan Sonowal, moved the Marine Aids to Navigation Bill 2021 in the Upper House for consideration and passing. Lok Sabha had passed this bill in March this year. Now, the Marine Aids to Navigation Bill 2021 repeals the Lighthouse Act of 1927 and seeks to provide a framework for the development, maintenance and management of aids to navigation in India. What are its other salient features, its application, the changes it will bring about in marine navigation and the global practices it incorporates? These are some of the aspects that we will discuss on The Big Picture today. And for this, I'm joined by two distinguished panelists. Let me first introduce them to you. I have with me Mr. D.K. Sinha. He is former Director General, Directorate General of Lighthouses and Lightships, Ministry of Shipping. And Mr. Chuck Shuroy, Head of Outreach, PRS Legislative Research. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Mr. Roy, let me begin the program today with you. In fact, if you could simplify it for us and our viewers first, what exactly does marine aid to navigation mean? And what does the Marine Aids to Navigation Bill 2021 provide? What are the salient features of this bill? You know, uh, thank you for having me on the program. If I step back and before I get into the details of the bill, if I can just lay the foundation about, you know, what this bill is trying to do. Yes. Now, uh, our country has coasts on both its western and eastern sides. And on these coasts are located major and minor ports, and we have ships coming into these ports with cargo or sometimes with passengers. And to aid these ships to reach the ports, you need some kind of a guidance. Now, you mentioned that uh, this bill is replacing almost a 90-year-old law, which was passed in 1927. Now, when the law was made in 1927, it was... Uh, it was providing for regulation of lighthouses and other uh, uh, techniques which would allow ships to safely guide into a port. 90 years later, technology has improved, ships have improved, guidance systems have improved. So there is a need to ensure that there are uh, mechanisms to guide ships which are not uh, just a simple light guiding a ship towards a safe passage from the sea to the harbor. So uh, now, if you look at what marine aids are there, and you know, I'm sure Mr. Sinha will talk a little bit in detail about those, but lighthouse is probably the most simplest of them, right? I mean, we've seen it in images, pictures. It's a tall tower with a, you know, with a light on top and it guides a ship. But now there are uh, radar beacons, uh, which means that a ship, can ping a radar beacon and a radar beacon located either on sea or shore, respond back with its position. Then uh, our phones uh, have uh, GPS, which allows us to find direction. Uh, GPS is a navigational system, which is always also available to ships, but sometimes the GPS does not have an ac accuracy to guide a ship in you know, tight waters. So you need instruments which can make sure that the GPS reading that the ship gets uh, is given by an instrument which is extremely accurate so that the ship does not collide with a wreck or a rock or something. Mm -hmm. Then there are other forms of navigational aids. They could be buoys you know, on the water. Uh, they could be a passive landmark. Now, the management of all of these rests with the central government. So what this bill is trying to trying to move from an era where navigational aids are quite simplistic to an era where navigational aids have become a lot more complex. Now, the big idea here is to ensure that uh, the passage of ships into our country is quick. So not only can they quickly come in, they can also be guided out of the ports with equal efficiency. The purpose as to why we would want to do that is to increase the efficiency of ports. Yes. The longer a ship takes to come into the port, you know, and the longer it takes to go out, then those berths at our ports are occupied 
and more ships can't come in. So you want to have an efficient system of guidance which would make these ships come in and go out. So this, you know, 2021 bill, it was introduced in Lok Sabha earlier uh, in the budget session and uh, it is now being discussed in Rajya Sabha. The idea being that with the overhauling of technology, you would also want to overhaul in the way in which the technology is regulated. Absolutely. So the officers uh, and the mechanisms provided to deal with this should also get enhanced. So the, the purpose of this bill simply is to elevate the entire uh, navigational or marine aids ecosystem in the country on both sides of the coast of Africa. Okay, Mr. Sinha. So, in in addition to coming with age, with technology, as Mr. Roy pointed out, so obviously there have been technological advancements ever since this colonial law uh, bill was was uh, passed in our country. We were following this 1927 law. Now there was need, of course, to re repeal this uh, very very colonial era law. Apart from the technological aspect that Mr. Roy has pointed out, and also for simplifying the navigation procedure. What are the other significant changes that you see with this new legislation coming in? Take you back to the 1927 when uh, there was no uniform system of management of the lighthouses. Mm -hmm. And here, the term, once I say lighthouses, it does not mean a, alone a lighthouse. Uh, it includes, encompasses the all the, uh, the systems which were uh, then available for uh, uh, providing the uh, aids navigation. The, I mean, uh, the, the buoys, what uh, uh, we have just heard, which is a floating aid in the, in the channels, and then any rake, uh, any mark, any mark or any beacon or any, any post which uh, uh, indirectly helping the mariners uh, for the safe passes. So this all uh, things were uh, encompassed in that one term that is the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And that's why the name Lighthouse Act it was. Now over the period of, uh, this is the when the only the visual aids navigation were, were used for the uh, sailing uh, safety of navigation. But subsequently as the technology advanced, uh, initially uh, the role of the Director General was only passive in nature. Then it became interactive with the advent of the new technology like uh, GPS, he said. But in the AIDS navigation, GPS alone is uh, not used. It is, its differential form is used in, uh, as AIDS navigation. By, by using the differential mode of GPS, in our phone, uh, we use GPS for navigating on the roads and uh, for reaching from one place to another. But once it is AIDS navigation, we use the differential mode of GPS. That means uh, we know precisely uh, a, a vessel is standing in, in the submeter accuracy. <clears throat> uh, and that is more useful when the vessel is approaching in the constricted water or approaching to the channel. So that is more useful then. In okay. the open sea, of course, it does not matter is GPS or DGPS, but once it is approaching the channel, then it is uh, differential form of the GPS and there it is submeter accurate. So, so that again along the coastline it is covered. Subsequently after the GPS, uh, the new uh, system that is the vessel traffic service, th that is a interactive system where the shore based authority has to interact with the, uh, the, uh, the vessel which is flying in the water and, uh, and needs the assistance from the shore. Mm -hmm. So the DGLL with the support of a Lighthouse Act was able to perform uh, all these activities, but there was no legal basis. It was through the executive order uh, and uh, through the need base, the things were uh, being uh, uh, done. So that's why a, a need was felt that there should be a legal basis. And that's why uh, this 90 years old it's, it's Lighthouse uh, Bill was replaced, repealed, and the new bill came into force, that is AIDS Navigation Bill. Okay, now, the okay. terminology AIDS navigation is the replacement of the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Because in the AIDS navigation, the, all the radio aids also are encompassed. Like be it a, a, automatic identification system, be it VTS, be it DGP, DGPS, or even the visual aids, the lighthouses. Okay, so, okay. it became AIDS navigation. 
ஜெனரல்ாக the task performed by him mm-hmm. has gone massive change because of this technical technological advancement and uh, those changes were not encompassed in the lighthouse act 1927 it was there was a need to uh, incorporate that to bring into the a framework legal framework the the activities what being performed by the dgl then then there, there is a uh, area which is uh, training and certification for the vts personnel it was again not there uh, in the uh, lighthouse act 1927 so in the new air navigation bill it has been uh, uh, strength has been given to the director general he can uh, establish the training institute for uh, vts personnel which our country did not had and uh, all the ports or all the vtss which are functional in the country their mining has to be standardized there should be a system of because the ships from the various countries are coming in our in our waters indian water and if there is no standard way of functioning of all the vts they will keep going from one one port to another port and experiencing different kind of vts so this all problems are to be addressed and then the dgll in the absence of legislation was not able to fully uh, impl- uh, apply uh, to uh, to correct it or okay. to okay. evolve a system of uh, a uniform system of functioning uniform uh, uh, mining pattern uniform training and certification okay 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 so uh, mr roy what, what the objective largely looks like of this bill is of course to meet the modern and the contemporary needs of the navigation the, the na- navigation system in our country but if we compare it to the global best practices uh, in the field of mar- marine navigation does this particular bill incorporate these best practices the international global standards does it meet all of them you know the idea of any piece of legislation is to you know do some kind of a standardization now if you look at uh, the bill that was passed by lok sabha in the statement of objects and reasons it said that uh, india as a sovereign has an obligation we have signed a treaty that we will provide marine aids of navigation so that ships you know coming to india uh, will have safe passage now uh, mr sinha was also pointing out that if you look at a country our country is divided into lighthouse districts so on the western side of a country there's a lighthouse district let's say in jamnagar because you know it has to service uh, ships coming in towards the gujarat side of the country mm-hmm. we have another lighthouse district in bombay you know where we have a major uh, jawaharlal nehru port then down the coast there is a lighthouse district in kochi on the other side we have a lighthouse district in calcutta now all of these lighthouse districts and all of the personnel working there and all the uh, all the equipment that is there should be standardized so no matter whether a ship is coming from panama whether a ship is coming from england or the united states or china it will have the it will receive a standardized response as it would receive not only in a port in india but in other ports of the world okay now if you look at the current bill it is uh, you know it is compartmentalized into two or three different areas now the first area that it is compartmentalized into is it is saying that there is going to be an authority established under central government which will be in charge of taking care of all of these marine aids of navigation now what i mean by in charge uh, they will decide as to what is the requirement uh mr sena was pointing out that people will have to be trained and certified and institutes will have to be set up where people will learn as to how to operate these instruments mm-hmm. and then be placed you know all along the country that's one compartmentalization the second compartmentalization is going to be 
what happens if somebody interferes with this kind of equipment which is uh, absolutely essential for ships to navigate so there should be some kind of a penalty that needs to be provided now in the 1927 law if let us say certain equipment was not covered in the definition of lighthouse and somebody tampered with it then you could not punish that person now with the with the definition being changed and modern navigational aids being brought into the ambit of the definition uh if somebody uh, tampers with this instrument or hampers these navigational instruments then there is an authority and you know that can prescribe uh, you know how to punish the person and the punishment is provided so that's the second compartment the third compartmentalization is something that we talked about was training you know and setting up of uh, standards and then uh, who's going to pay for all of this i was looking at the budget of the government of india and i think last year uh the budget for uh, uh lighthouses was uh, about 480 crores now maintaining of uh, these navigational aids <coughs> requires money yes so the law also provides as to what is the kind of uh, charges that will be levied on ships that enter into our country because they'll be using these navigational aids so uh, the central government will be able to prescribe charges now those charges could be based on you know uh, for example on the uh, size of the ship you know how big a tonnage of the ship is and that money that is recovered will then augment uh, the budget of uh, the country in taking care of these navigational aids improving them maintaining them and installing new navigational aids finally there is one interesting aspect uh, of the law uh, in your opening remarks you had mentioned that the law is now 90 years old a uh, 90 year old law is yeah. being changed which means that there are lighthouses in this country which might be of equivalent age uh, so if i look at the lok sabha website uh, the government answered a question where it said that there are i think 18 lighthouses which are more than 75 years old now the law provides that there are certain lighthouses that you know the government will identify as heritage lighthouses which means that uh, you know they cannot be actively used for uh, aiding navigation of ships but uh, you know they are they are part of our heritage so they can be used for education purposes they can be used for tourism purposes and the law provides uh, that certain lighthouses which will be identified as heritage lighthouses will then be used for such purpose it's so, a very very interesting all... aspect that has been given by the government to this very very technical issue mr sinha let me take that question to you what mr roy says and what okay. the, uh, what the uh, then <coughs> shipping minister when the bill was discussed in the lok sabha also said that there are 195 lighthouses in our country mr roy pointed out there are 18 which are uh, about 90 years old and the government now intends to you know convert them into heritage uh, sites for educational for cultural purposes and also for historic from a historical point of view it's going to be uh, very very significant for the students but how to promote because something on paper and something actually being done how can this be promoted so that it actually becomes a tourist destination so that people are actually attracted towards you know and they have this urge to know more and more about these uh, lighthouses yes uh, so the, not only 75 years i, I will add to uh, mr rai's uh, uh, statement uh, we have uh, more than 150 year old lighthouses also mm -hmm. and still uh, standing uh, and uh, providing the yeoman service to the mariners the by uh, the by the idea of declaring heritage uh, is of course recognizing the service provided by these uh, these lighthouses and also the uh, making a uh, a checklist that this henceforth these lighthouses will be needing a additional uh, care the additional maintenance uh, uh, but not the routine watch what is a new lighthouse uh, uh, is a, is a, you, in the lighthouses i will tell you we call it a lighthouse family the entire the staff and officers they are they term themselves uh, as a lighthouse family 
and similarly goes on the international forum uh, the uh, perspective if you talk we have got the ila international association of lighthouse uh, and its navigation authority mm -hmm. which is uh, which has which was so far uh, the international uh, yeah, uh, organization ngo now it has got the status of igo uh, it is uh, uh, the agreement is in the process of uh, signing diplomatic uh, level uh, those things are taking place so the ila also term is at ila family so that's why the lighthouse which has uh, become age old that is 200 years 150 and more we still treat it as a part of the family like a grandfather in the family who should be given a special care treatment now regarding the the education and uh, academic value of this yes i think the lighthouse the ministry has already taken a, a proposal of promotion of tourism because there are many lighthouses which is uh, the 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 scenic beauty and the the ambience uh, is yet to be tapped for, for the uh, tourism point of view so so those things are uh, being uh, worked out um, uh, that is the different uh, part is not the direct discussion for today's matter but very, very significant uh, considering uh, India has, has a very, very rich history in navigation and the government in, 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 indeed wants to tap the potential to make it an, yes. an interesting educational subject. Okay, uh, let me go back to yes. Mr. Roy. So you were pointing out, you know, the powers of the central government towards managing and uh, managing of the vessel traffic services. Now, if I may uh, ask you, what exactly are the powers of the central government towards this? And also for training and certification, what are the steps that, that have been proposed in this bill? Great. Uh, Tina, uh, two separate aspects. Uh, one is around certification, and that certification aspect is absolutely essential because it allows a standardization of curriculum of what is taught. Uh, it allows for standardization of equipment. And will across. that will that be done by the central government? Yes, uh, the cent the the bill provides the framework for uh, the central government, so that the central government can then pass orders and notification, mm -hmm. and the authority established by the central government under the, under the Ministry of Shipping will then be able to carry out these duties under the mandate of the law. Similarly, uh, the the, the law also provides for a number of things. So, for example, what will happen to the money that is collected, uh, you know, as maritime dues? Uh, you know, there will be they will be put into a separate account. That account will have to be audited. What about you said you said about you know traffic? How do you ensure as to what is the mechanism for uh, for ensuring that traffic through our ports or through our navigational channels? is streamlined. So the government also has the power to provide notifications uh, for that. Uh, and since uh, uh, and since this entire mechanism is not controlled by the state government, but by the central government, it will be common all across. So the central government will be able to, let's say, provide directions to say, you know, what should be the stand, what should be the mechanism that should be followed in Andaman Nicobar versus what should be the uh, mechanism that should be followed in Calcutta. So some of those things are, uh, you know, left to delegation rather than provided in the text of the law. Okay. Mr. Sena, one last question from you. The bill also speaks about, you know, uh, the proposal, the provisions talk about protecting the environment and also marking of wrecks in general waters to indicate sunken or stranded vessels for safe navigation. So how will this happen? What is this provision? If you could help us understand in detail. Okay, okay. Uh, first, first thing uh, I will like to add to Mr. Roy's uh, uh, information, uh, what he just now told. Yes. See the lighthouse department, this is lighthouse dues are collected right from the beginning. It is uh, there for the, because the lighthouse department is considered as a self-sustaining department. And uh, a, a certain uh, amount of that is multiplication of the tonnes, what uh, the uh, net tonnes, NT, uh, uh, rated uh, the, uh, the cargo vessel, that is collected as a uh, light dues and that is deposited with the government as a general reserve fund. And uh, it, it is utilized for uh, meeting all the expenses of the department. 
subsequently the the this tankers came and then for the tankers also there was uh, uh, some problem in calculating in terms of tonnes then the tu to 20 equivalent unit that is stability factor was taken into consideration and the light dues were collected mm -hmm. and once when the gst came into the picture then uh, the uh, uh, when the light dues was being collected the gst tax was not the part of it so to accommodate that Again, uh, this, that was one of the important necessity uh, for uh, putting it into the this act. That is the application of the GST on the this collection. Okay. Now uh, I will go back to the rec marking. Uh, the rec means uh, any any vessels uh, uh, sunk in the open sea. The DGLs, the Director General of Lighthouse and Lightships responsibility comes when the rec is the vessel is sunk beyond the uh, port limit. If it is within the port limit, that is the responsibility of respective port to mark it, or they will request the director general that to please uh, uh, take this work. Uh, once the government gives the directive, then uh, DGL will come into action and will mark the rig. But once it is beyond the port water, the DGL has to uh, uh, come with the emergency rig marking uh, 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 immediately and uh, it has got a specialized vessel uh, that it will come and mark that rake so that the mariners who are passing by they will keep a safe distance mm -hmm. uh, they will know that uh, something is submerged here it is not safe for us to uh, make a passes and they will make a distance okay. so this thing again uh, it uh, this this role of the director general was not a direct responsibility as per the lighthouse act 1927 and this task was being performed. So uh, this is what, again, the DGLL is, has been strengthened yes. by bringing this uh, role of the DGLL within the ambit of the Air Navigation Bill 2021. Okay, so Another thing now, Mr. Happened. Roy, was, I will just one more, one more, I will just conclude it. Uh, that is, uh, uh, this light dues collection system is similar all along the coastline, irrespective of the whether it is Port Blair or it is uh, Andhra Pradesh or it is Kerala. Mm -hmm. So it is for the central government and the uh, uh, dues collected are similar all along the coastline. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sinha, for putting uh, things into perspective and helping us understand this very, very technical bill uh, in, in such simpler words. Thank you, Mr. Roy, for uh, joining us on the program today and explaining to us the important, significant features of this uh, very, very important bill that has been uh, tabled in uh, Rajya Sabha by the newly inducted minister, Sarbanath Sonowal, for consideration and passing. The Lok Sabha had passed this bill in March this year. So with that, I'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you once again to both my guests for joining me on the program and sharing their perspective with us on this key bill. So that's it from us on The Big Picture today. See you again same time tomorrow. Thanks very much for your time.